Well, thank you for staying with us. This is Firecrackers. Let's cross over live to Texas in the U.S., where um, I have my guest standing by to speak with us. She's a foreign affairs analyst. Uh, Som to Chuku IK Jofo joins us uh, live from Texas. Som to, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with Galaxy TV. Uh, let's begin from the U U.S., where you are. Um, at the moment, it appears um, uh, President Donald Trump has suffered another legal blow as one of the Supreme Court uh, threw out a suit uh, from some U.S. Uh, Republicans. Uh, where you are, what exactly is playing out there? Yes, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, as of last night, the, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania threw out a court case that the Republicans brought up saying that they wanted to toss us mailing ballots in the state of Pennsylvania, many ballots are legal. So that's the thing about the United States. Each state has its law pertaining to the election. And in Pennsylvania, and many ballots are legal. They have different dates and timelines. You can submit the time where they were going back and forth. Whether you submit your ballot later or the day before. So it depends. But honestly, there is not much the Trump lawyers and the GOP can do at this point because it's been tossed out by the state Supreme Court. And the federal government doesn't have any influence in state, state law. They can use federal law that's in the independent states. So if the Pennsylvania state Supreme Court has said no, then that's it. There are a number of other issues we need to engage your views and your thoughts on. But let's stay in the U.S. for a moment as uh, Mr. Trump uh, also eventually took questions from journalists finally at uh, the Thanksgiving uh, uh, press uh, briefing. Uh, though he has not, he's yet to concede, but he has been quoted as saying he won the elections. I mean, he's insisted that he never lost the elections. He's also been quoted as saying that it appears, uh, quote, dead people voted. He, the, the president also said it's like we are in a third world country. What do you make of Trump and his uh, shenanigans? Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. The issue with Russia was kind of like a... Uh, it was a little annoying with the uh, on the side of Trump, so this is just a show for, just to get back at the Democrats that happened with the Russia situation. We all know the numbers don't lie. Sort of for Joe Biden, there is a difference. Seven million people, almost seven million people voted more for Joe Biden. People voted more for Joe Biden than they voted for Obama. So the people have spoken. There, you can take it with that, you know. Yes, Donald Trump keeps tweeting about that. And I'm happy that my friends at Twitter keep flagging that because that's false information. You know, the math does not lie. Elections are math. Elections are statistics. The math does not lie. People came out with shows, despite a global pandemic, so they wanted their voices to be heard. So, yeah, it's a new picture Trump is a showman. You know, he wants to keep going, the show going. In terms of conceding, yes, he, I don't think he will. This is just my analysis. I don't think he will concede, bluntly, but he will let the transition to happen. Let's, let's cross over to the UK, where some lawmakers earlier in the week uh, had a debate about uh, possible sanctions on some uh, government um, officials here in Nigeria. A step in the right direction, you think? Yes, so I think this is, this is good. I don't want to say it's good publicity for the people, but it's good. It's their moral obligation to get involved, right? Because they did train some parts of the set, or some sets of signs. They trained some police. Uh, so yes, it is the interface, right? Um, in terms of the suffering, then has to be an investigation. You cannot sanction someone who did not do it. But also, know the actions have consequences. And those that did something wrong, so yes, I am fully support of the individual of the country. Some economic sanctions have issues. Um, it brings issues and problems to the economy. The country was already in a recession, so economic sanctions on the country will be an issue. So, yes, 
So I think it's better they do it to individuals. Uh, I mean, you acquired three degrees in six years in, in economics, in political yeah. science, and public affairs administration. You need to wade into the education sector here in Nigeria for a moment because ASO has been on strike for almost uh, nine months now. Moving forward, how, how can we improve this particular sector in the country? So, thank you so much for asking that. I believe that the best way to do is autonomy to the education system. So, education policy is very complicated. People, various schools of thought, say we should have a full overhaul, which is comprehensive education. But we've lost our moment. So, I think it's best to go forward with the agreement they had. They agreed you brought up a uh, uh, number of they came down to 70 billion. I think that's a good point. There has to be steps taken to make sure that they had to do. But then again, I understand the situation going on, but it means it's a long time. We are not in, in education, it's because you want to be rich, you teach because you want society. You know, you know, to be, be to, be, to be, from it. I, so, so yeah, I understand I, that so, so it's to be paid. That's amazing. They do need to be paid. Both our parents and teachers here in the I understand that. There has to be some kind of. And I'm glad that they called up the show. And I'm glad that they are good because I've been following the discussion. And it was very interesting to watch. It was very interesting to you and all that. And we have to let you go. But just one more question. You are an economist. No uh, Nigeria plus into her second recession uh, in five years. It's the second. And here's the worst in uh, over three decades, over 30, 33 you, years. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, uh, moving forward, what does this mean actually to the average Nigerian? Um, to the average Nigerian, food prices are going to go up. It means to spoil your car, you're going to pay more. There are solutions to this. An invisible hand coming in. That's a global pandemic, and this was right. And you were talking earlier about yes, we have to open the prison, but safely, safely, and effectively, right? Because we are a global country, we have to open the economy back up. We can go back to you know the process of supply and demand. Do what they need to do to get it, and also. This is spending season, right? This is spend a lot of money. So there's a flux of flow of funds coming in. You have to get to December, you have to get to Christmas, weddings, marriages, New Year celebrations. So there's a lot of money coming in. This situation I've had is to solve the intervention, allow the accessible for people to invest more. We'd like to thank you so much for agreeing to speak with Galaxy no, no, no. TV Foreign Affairs Analysts. I mean, you have such a huge uh, bio, economist, political scientist, uh, public yeah. administration. I mean, there's, there's, there's so much about you. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us. No problem. Thank you so much for having so we'll be speaking with the Foreign Affairs Analyst, uh, Som Tochuku Ike Geofor from Texas in the U.S. This is Firecrackers. My next guest...